Howdy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Today we have a 2013 Casey Kane Great Clips Chevrolet Camaro. Let me tell you, this is one of the most overproduced cars from 2013, but look how cool the box design is. Man, I really wish we had these diecasts uh, in 2024 made with this style of uh, box. But regardless, let's go ahead and hop into the diecast review. Alrighty, folks, try out the good old box and check out this diecast. Again, this is one of the most overproduced cars from 2013. They made the Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nationwide car as well, but what a cool little paint scheme here, man. Very modern, very uh, pretty cutting edge for the time. And uh, fortunately, since this is overproduced, it was very cheap, so that that's always good. But uh, let's go in, uh, jump right into this diecast review. Of course, pick this one up for our friends at Circle B Diecast. Uh, they they don't have this one in stock specifically, but I think they have the display set that has this uh, in stock currently. So uh, uh, if you want to pick up this car, you get a buttload of them. They have it over there. Uh, make sure you use that promo code for any orders thirty dollars more. Use code Diecast Buffet. You get six dollars off on shipping. So, uh, looking at this car here, guys, this was a very long-term sponsor for Casey Kane. I mean, back in the, uh, the 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 Bush Series days, all the way up to the Nationwide days, Casey Kane uh, and Great Clips. They had a lot of good runs. And at the time, this was 2013. Well, they were still sponsoring Casey Kane as far back as 2004. So they were a long-term sponsor with him. And they even went cup racing as well. So this is the first year of the Chevrolet Camaro being in the NASCAR top three ranks. I think they might have ran a couple races back in the late 60s and the 70s because they had muscle cars then. But uh, th this car... It, it was a really, really big deal. So 2010, the Challenger and the Mustang came out. But, you know, the, the Chevrolet equivalent was still running the Impala. Well, the Impala, yeah, it, it's cool for the Cup Series and stuff. But it, it wasn't as youthful and as uh, exciting as the other two counterparts. Of course, they had the Camry as well, which, I mean, it's a Camry, you know. <laughs> Anyways, when Camaro came out in 2013, it was a big deal. Uh, and uh, naturally, they made a buttload of these die kits, so you can make plenty of customs with these things. Got the number five right there. Got a bright, kind of a a, a dew yellow or kind of a lime green. Got Camaro, yeah, Sunoco Mail Moog uh, Comp. I think that's I don't even know what the biff that is. This was a junior motorsports car. And uh, they had a buttload of great nationwide die kits from 2013. I'm just going to name off a couple of them that were really cool. They had a Paul Menard, uh, I think it was a Childress car. It was number 33. I don't think it was KHI. But anyways, they had a Paul Menard car that got made. They have Kevin Harvick, obviously. But they also made a, a 2013 Jimmy Johnson as well, which is really freaking cool. And... Um, I, I want to say they had a Matt Crafton one as well. I could be really out in left field, but I thought they made a Matt Crafton nationwide car as well. They had some really obscure stuff. But anyways, it was just a certain era in NASCAR uh, diecast history. They they weren't making the small teams much anymore for the nationwide slash Bush, Bush series, but all the cup stars were getting their diecasts made. And um, nowadays, it's, it's, it's kind of topsy-turvy because... They don't make all the Cup Series stars in the in the lower series. It's like five JRM cars, maybe four raced wins from the whole season, and like one Joe Gibbs Racing diecast. Like that. That's pretty much all the nationwide or now the Xfinity series we get. So it's a, it, it was definitely a different era. Um, I personally prefer how the 2000s were because. You had so much more cars that got made. I mean, almost every full-time Bush driver had a promo, a winner circle release, a team caliber release, something. Go to the left side of the diecast. Now, the paint scheme is identical to the Dale Earnhardt Jr. version, which is just badged with the 88. Uh, I do miss the number five uh, part of the Junior Motorsports camp, and I kind of wish they would have kept it because they got their first career win with, I think it was Mark Martin at Las Vegas in 08 or 09. I wish they would have kept that number five. Uh, no, no, their first win was it? I think it was 08 because Brad K won in the 88 in 2008. So I think it was 08 when Mark Martin won. I uh, got great clips there, tax layer. Got uh, whatever the biff that decal is. I don't know what that one is either. You got America's Power. I think it was a coal uh, initiative. You got Casey Kane's signature, which it's actually a large signature <laughs> for a door panel. Uh, this is something that was very popular during the Nationwide series of time, was the fake door handles. I don't know why, but 
I, I guess it was it was just something very popular, and you can see the fake little um, canards there. Got uh, nationwide series mechanics for Holly 3M Elderbrock Simpson JE ARP MSD Jegs Autometer Goodyear uh, NASCAR race car. Now, one of the most popular things at that time as well was the what they called the dog ear spoiler. Uh, yeah, this little spoiler right here. And what was interesting is it was optional to run one of them, I think. So I think every track had to have the right side one. I could be mistaken on that, but you could actually not run the left side one. So the spoiler did look a little bit goofy. Uh, it's kind of like the wicker bill you would see on top of the cars at Daytona and Talladega maybe in the early 2000s. But it was an option, and I, I don't... I don't know how effective it was. I was very, you know, I was like 10 or 12, 13, around that time uh, in the early 2010s. So I don't remember how effective it was in terms of producing great racing, but I do remember seeing uh, a variety of different spoiler configurations, which I'm all for strategy. I really am. Like, I, I'm not opposed to it, but it, it's definitely a unique thing. I uh, got Mac Tools right there. Great clips. It's going to be great. Got the number five. And, and again, about the box design, guys, it's the paint scheme. That's what's so cool about it. Like, I don't understand why is it so difficult to make the boxes like this nowadays. Like, you have the artwork of the paint scheme, right? Point, click, copy, and paste. That's all you got to do. I, I guarantee you the teams can provide you with the normal artwork, you know, just the actual base paint scheme without all the logos on it because they use it for rendering. It's different layers, it's vectors, and all kinds of crazy stuff. My point is, they could easily do this nowadays. They're too lazy to do it. I'm just going to shoot you straight on it. I've seen the 2024 boxes, guys, and I'm going to be honest with you. The 2023 boxes, from what I see, actually look better. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, it, it blows my mind how bad the boxes look uh, for the 164 line. Uh, if I was in charge, it wouldn't happen. Uh, anyways, go to the top of the car. You got the number five. Uh, the, the paint scheme pattern, it's modern. It's it's kind of like a like a confetti, kind of a fiesta. I don't know. It just got a certain vibe to it. It's pretty cool. Got all kinds of little sharp angles around it. Different colors. Got the number five. Nothing on the deck lid. Again, it's one of the most overproduced die casts from 2013. There was a lot of them from that era. Uh, that they made an absolute biff ton of. <laughs> but it's it's a good thing at the same time because if you're a Casey Kane fan, if you're a Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan, it's not hard to find. And if you're a custom guy uh, like myself, you can make almost any paint scheme. Get this, this die cast mold right here was used from 2013, I believe, all the way up to 2016. So that means any uh, you know Chevy Camaro from 13 to 2016 you can make with this die cast so it, it, it's very good that it's uh it's overproduced you know like the dodge challenger that was ran from 2010 to 2012 well guess what they only made like two uh, two of them i think it was like two or four of them so extremely limited production run i want to say two of them i mean like two individual paint schemes basically i think it was brad k and sam hornis jr from 2012 they might have made a 2011 edition of it i'm not sure anyways very rare very expensive you can't make anything with them because they're like, who wants to go pay 40 dollars for a car you're gonna go dip in acetone you feel me it, it, <laughs> you know what i'm saying it, it's it's sad and and then you look at the camry they overproduced that fortunately in the fords I think some of them were overproduced as well. So you could pretty much make any of them except for the Dodges because the Dodges are ridiculously expensive, which sucks because there were so many great nationwide paint schemes. And uh, just a just an interesting era. And, and you know what makes me feel old is that if you were a kid and you were like born in 2010, you don't remember any of this racing. <laughs> like I remember watching uh, Brad K went on a Friday night at Richmond or some BS and Kyle Busch winning every other Phoenix race. You know, I remember the cup leeches were just going crazy in the early 2010s. Uh, for you young fans out there that are watching right now that didn't experience the, 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 the late nationwide era, let me tell you, it was good. But it had its bad moments. Oh my goodness. It had some bad moments. Every single week, you could pick from like three drivers and you could bet the whole farm one of them three were going to win because they were always cup guys. It was crazy. 
Have a blessed one, everybody. Thank you all for watching this video. Love y'all. Diecast Buffet. Sign it off.